Welcome back to Cross Culture New Mexico. I'm your host, Mark Tross. We appreciate you joining us on YouTube. You can join us online at crossculturenm.weebly.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and like and share our Facebook page, Cross Culture NM. Today we're going to continue with the rebirth of America, and the topic is evidences of our Christian heritage. There are many evidences that our nation was founded on a commitment to God and the principles of his word. In the summer of 1787, representatives met in Philadelphia to write the Constitution of the United States. After they had struggled for several weeks and had made little or no progress, 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin rose and addressed the troubled and disagreeing convention that was about to adjourn in confusion. In the beginning of the contest with Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayers in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of a superintending providence in our favor. Have we now forgotten this powerful friend? Or do we imagine we no longer need his assistance? I have lived, sir, a long time. And the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of man. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it profitable, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I firmly believe this. I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth prayers and imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessing on our deliberation be held in this assembly every morning. The very purpose of the pilgrims in 1620 was to establish a government based on the Bible. The New England Charter signed by King James I confirmed this goal to advance the enlargement of Christian religion to the glory of God Almighty. Governor Bradford, in writing of the Pilgrim's Landing, describes their first act, being thus arrived in a good harbor and brought safe to land, they fell upon their knees and blessed the God of heaven. Confirmed by the colonies, the goal of government based on scripture was further reaffirmed by individual colonies such as the Rhode Island Charter of 1683 which begins, We submit our persons, lives, and estates unto our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and to all those perfect and most absolute laws of His given us in His Holy Word. Those absolute laws became the basis of our Declaration of Independence, which includes in, in its first paragraph an appeals to the laws of nature and of nature's God. Our national constitution established a republic under the absolute laws of the Bible, not a democracy based on the changing whims of people, reaffirmed by the presidents. In his inaugural address to Congress, the first president of our nation stressed God's role in the birth of this republic. No people can be bound to acknowledge and adore the invisible hand which conducts the affairs of men more than the people of the United States. Every step by which they have advanced to the character of an independent nation seems to have been distinguished by some token of providential agency. We ought to be no less persuaded that the propitious smiles of heaven cannot be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained. One of George Washington's early official acts was the first Thanksgiving proclamation which reads, Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge 
the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly implore His protection and favor. goes on to call the nation to thankfulness to Almighty God. Continuing through the decades of history, we find in the inaugural address of all the presidents and in the Constitution of all 50 of our states, without exception, references to the Almighty God of the universe, the author and sustainer of our liberty. Observed by historians, the principles of God's word guided the decisions on which this nation built its foundation. This was the discovery of Alex de Coqueville, the noted French political philosopher of the 19th century. He visited America in her infancy to find the secret of her greatness. As he traveled from town to town, he talked with people and asked questions. He examined our young national government, our schools and centers of business, but could not find in them the reason for our strength. Not until he visited the churches of America and witnessed the pulpits of this land aflame with righteousness. Did he find the secret of our greatness? Did he find the secret of our greatness? Returning to France, he summarized his findings. America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Throughout our history, our forefathers had given eloquent testimony of our commitment to God and his principles. It is the duty of nations, as well as of men, to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. Abraham Lincoln the religion which has introduced civil liberty is the religion of Christ and his apostles. To this we owe our free constitutions of government. Noah Webster. The concluding words of our national anthem summarize the fact that the United States of America was born out of a commitment to God and his principles. Blessed with victory and peace, May this heaven-rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause it is just. And this be our motto, in God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The moral principles and precepts contained in the scriptures ought to form the basis of all our civil constitutions and laws. All the miseries and evils which men suffer from vice, crime, ambition, injustice, oppression, slavery, and war proceed from their despising or neglecting the precepts contained in the Bible. That's Noah Webster. Next time we'll cover the Bible and the dawn of the American dream. By John W. Whitehead. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to join us online, crossculturenm.weebly.com. Follow us on Twitter, and be sure to like and share our Facebook page, Cross Culture NM.